I know I hate goodbyes too. This will be the last time we see each other for a while. This is crazy. What are we doing? It is approximately the crack of dawn. Well, I made a little brain fart. What will our lives be like separated? Just entered the belly of the beast. You can actually see the whale's backbone right up there on the ceiling. Gotta get her up to speed. No. Welcome to Bums on a Boat, where actions speak louder than words. Our past and words like bum, loser, success, or failure do not define us. We are what we choose to do now. Throw it in! Wish me luck on this adventure. Let's go, baby! Lola. Come here, old girl. Come here, sweetie. You gotta say goodbye. I'm I'm gonna be leaving for a bit. Oh, I'm gonna really miss you. Yo, you be good on the farm, okay, sweetie? I'll see you in Grenada. Take it easy on Jarvis here, okay? Jarvis? Yeah, I'm gonna miss you too. I won't be seeing you on the island, though. You know, you're gonna be on the farm. Oh. Living a good life. I know, I hate goodbyes too. Well, goodbye. This is gonna be the longest Michael and I have been apart since we've been together. And that's been four years. Uh, three years ago, we were apart for about four weeks. So we have done one long distance thing. But for the most part, we've been attached at the hip for ever, you know, ever since we, uh, she jumped on the boat. We've just been uh, going through life together. I think we're gonna dibs this little girl. Dibs here. Yeah. So this is going to be a little different and maybe challenging a bit. Uh, any of you out there have experience with having to uh, go long periods of time away from your love? If so, let me know what are some of your techniques, how you get through it. We're going to call each other every night um, it's gonna be a little tough at first because it's three hour time difference once I leave here But I think we'll get on a routine and check in and that's That's what we have so far. We don't actually know how long we're gonna be apart I think that's part of what is making it really difficult earlier in the year when I figured out that my sister was pregnant it became clear that My family was gonna need extra help on the farm this summer my sister is integral to the running of their operation and with her new baby coming just before harvest, that was basically going to put her out of the game. It is putting her out of the game. So my dad asked if I would be willing to come back and help them through harvest really the whole summer and kind of take over for my sister so she can get that really important time with the new baby. But. Last summer we were away from the boat for a really long time and we didn't like leaving the boat on its own for like six months, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, so I really wanted to help out my family and I agreed, but we decided we didn't want to leave our boat alone for quite so long, so we came up with a little compromise where Joel's going to go back and take care of Jacques Mate while I help my family out through harvest. And harvest is generally the month of August into September. Not really sure. One year they're cutting until November. Which is also the height of hurricane season. And that's another reason why I'm heading back. So I'll be with Jacques yeah. Mate during the, the real dicey part of hurricane season. Exactly. So we're both um, gonna be where we feel like we're gonna be most effective. Um, but that just means that we're not gonna be together which like Joel said is so hard because we've done everything together. We've done life together for the better part of the last five years. <sighs> so wish us luck. This is, it's not really real yet. He's going to the airport right now, but 
it's about to be real. We're gonna continue to film and keep you updated with what's going on with Joel as he makes his way back to the boat and with me on the farm helping out through harvest because harvest is pretty dicey. It's a crazy time of year. So I'd like to keep you all in the loop with what's going on there. Crazy. What are we doing? Whose idea was this? Both of ours. We're gonna be all right, guys. Seemed like a good idea. We're gonna make it. it. We'll make it. Yeah. All right. Here we go. I got a flight to catch. Before flying back to Grenada, where our boat is, I will be making a few stops. First stop, Bloomington, Indiana. That river here. Oh, we're going off target. Getting together with lifelong friends not only keeps you grounded, but it keeps you humble. Are you gonna throw it with the backpack on you? Or? You're gonna throw it with the backpack on you. Okay. It's a good balance. Oh! You're up by me, Jeff. Don't pull the up, okay? You're never afraid to laugh at one another. Shot for me. <laughs> and you're able to let your guard down, which is nice. You're also reminded of who you were as a kid, and you can find clarity on who you aspire to be now. Pretty much how I grew it up. Get over there! It is approximately the crack of dawn. Mom and I woke up at about 4 o'clock, left the house around 4.30 to get in. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> to get down here to do sprinklers around five and the sun is not up yet. Well, I made a little brain fart. I forgot my tools and the spare sprinkler head. We've got a head that's broken on the wheel line. So I can't fire that up until I get it fixed. I left everything back in the pickup. Well, I guess it was worth a try. That didn't work at all. I kind of mangled up the threads. There's a little overlap from the heads next to it and the alfalfa around here is pretty dang good. So we're gonna have to move on because we got more stuff to do. It is now 6.14. Mom and I got sprinklers done in record time this morning. I thought it was gonna take maybe two hours, but an hour and 15 minutes, that's awesome. We just gotta clean the screen and then head out to the harvest field. Good work. This is the rig we call Gandalf because he's old and very wise. He's the ultimate service vehicle. He's got everything you need, slip tank, toolbox, grease guns, air compressor, blower for the combines, coveralls. So my mission today is to get the combines serviced up so that when dad and Jimmy come back from the river with the semis that they're hauling grain down with, they are ready to jump in, turn the key and go. I got some uh, good news and some bad news for you. I know, you didn't get it fixed. I turned your bolt on the sprinkler head into a circle. Yeah, it's brass. I didn't break the pipe. That's good. <laughs> but I don't yeah. know if that'll ever come off. Oh, I'll get it off. Use a pipe wrench on it. Need a little penetrating oil. Need more than that. Combines are all serviced up, fueled up, greased up. Same with the bank out wagon and the tractor. Had a little broken chain there, so dad's gonna have to go back to the shop and do maintenance on that. But first, 
we are going to lay out that field of canola back behind me. You can probably just barely see it past the trucks there. We wrapped up with the wheat field yesterday. So that is this field that we're parked in. And yeah, I'm about to hop in the combine and get to it. Duct tape fixes everything. Got what are you duct taping over here? Well, we're going to canola. Oh, making sure all the little kernels, do you call them kernels or seeds? Seeds. None of the seeds leak out. Yeah, there's always a little pile of wheat here. Mm -hmm. So it's probably leaking out right there. All right, I'll follow you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we've got to make some changes to the combine settings so that it's able to harvest canola effectively because the canola seeds are so much smaller than the wheat kernels that we've been harvesting. So I've got my little cheat sheet here and I'm gonna start making those adjustments. Working it out right now. Cylinder RPM. change of plans this afternoon. Dad's gonna do some work on the bank out wagon. So I've grabbed his combine, which is exactly the same as my combine, just with a 30 foot header rather than a 25 foot header. So a little bit more advanced. And I'm gonna keep cutting while he does some work on the bank out wagon. And Jimmy should be coming back with the truck any hour now. And then he'll jump in the other combine and we'll just keep cutting. So I'm going to follow this seed skip here where you see all the weeds up along the contour of the hill and back and it'll just make a nice circle. I can keep cutting in basically all afternoon and be really efficient. That's the name of the game here. Efficiency. So I'm going to gobble up all these weeds on the first pass basically. And then it's going to be really good cutting from here on out. Pretty much it for the day. Got a lot of canola harvested. It's probably about 7.30, 7.45. Whew. And um, Dad's going to blow off the engine of this combine just so there's no chaff and dust and flammable stuff sitting up on the exhaust and whatnot overnight. We're really in the zone about fire precaution and all that. That's why we blow off the combines in the morning. And then we'll jump in the rig and head on back to the house for a late supper, a shower and bed so we can wake up at 4 a.m. and do it all again tomorrow. Back in Indiana, we're exploring caves. Now I'm taking you along with my mom and I to explore Blue Spring Caverns. I will allow you to reach over and feel the water, get an idea of how cold it is. This is the longest underground navigable body of water in the United States. The tour is actually three miles long, but there's 20 miles of charted caverns most of which is a little too dicey to bring tourists along. Our tour guide, Andrew, who is the cave people of all cave peoples, greatly enhanced our experience. Just entered the belly of the beast. You can actually see the whale's backbone right up there on the ceiling. That would be really cool if it was a whale fossil. <laughs> but it is a fairly interesting feature of the cave itself. This is actually what's known as the lifeline of the cave. And this is the original path of this river. You have to stop and think. Everything that we're going through at one point was just solid stone. This cave started no bigger than a roll of quarters. The water coming down through cracks and crevices above us, dripping slowly but surely off the ends of these, will leave behind a small amount of a mineral called calcite. And that calcite slowly builds up and builds up over time, creating these odd-shaped formations. 
They have an amazing growth rate of about one cubic centimeter every 100 years. Do not like loud noises. I recommend plugging your ears for the first bit because uh, that bang can be a little bit loud, especially if you have tinnitus like myself. So, without further ado, Cave Thunder. And of course, there's never a mom visit without horses. So what are you doing here, mom? So this is this is desensitizing, and so what it does is it um, it gets them quieter. How's she doing, mom? Well, she's kind of on crack. Did she just say she's kind of on crack? What does that mean? What do you mean by that? Is that good or bad? She's hyper. She's hyper. No oh boy. The plan is for me to get on Bella and actually get her up to speed for the first time in my life. What do you think, Mom? Well, she's going really fast. Are you nervous or? Well, I'm nervous for you. I don't want her to run off on me. I think I can do it. Mom's afraid. She says Bella's acting crazy. <laughs> I'm ready to go. You guys know me. Um, it is dangerous. Horses can really do some crazy things, but. So do you know how to do the emergency stop? I got the emergency stop, so I think that's really all I need to know. Pull the head to the side. But are you gonna go crazy on her? I'm gonna go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to get hurt, Mom. Um. I gotta ride Bella. Gotta get her up to speed. No. No. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared for you, Joel. Overcome your fear, Mom. I'm and scared let me get for on you, Bella. Joel. Okay, so show me how you slide your hand down the rein. Okay. Yep, and pull it to your hip. Hold on to it, pull it to your hip. Good your, girl, hip. Bella. your hip. Your hip. Here goes nothing. All right, Bella, let's go. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Okay, try a little trot. Trot three strides and then stop her. Oh, yeah. Stop. Oh, yeah. I told you. Slide your hand down. Up, down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> oh. Let's go, Bella. <laughs> Good, whoa. All right, you guys, that was pretty insane. Um, I'm gonna call it. I think mom said I actually got her to a canter. Yeah, you did. So yeah. I got the trot and the canter, just for a, a brief moment, maybe, <laughs> you know, maybe 30 seconds. <laughs> but uh, I think I'm gonna take that as a win and uh, give Bella a break, but this was fun. It was, it's definitely intimidating. You gotta, <laughs> gotta put your time in with the horses, I think, to feel comfortable. What do you think, Mom? Yeah, I think so, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Good girl, Bella. Good girl, Bella. Well, there you have it. Michael and I are physically separated for the foreseeable future. She's working her butt off at the farm, and as you can tell, I'm just having a good old time vacationing with all my friends and family. I'm now in Florida, where our boat adventure all began, and I'm reconnecting with friends from day one when we decided to come here and buy the boat. So this is a very special place, Tampa, Florida. We have a patron meetup coming up soon. And I'm only here for a little bit of time and then I'm going back to the boat and I'll be getting to work. Don't you worry, Michael's not gonna have all the fun. I am going to get to work on our sailboat, Shock Mate, and I'm gonna have it looking good for Michael when she leaves the farm to come back to Grenada. So stay tuned. We're gonna be keeping you in the loop with Michael and the Schuster family farm. Subscribe if you're new here. We're in a bit of a weird transition, but we got a lot of great plans. Whoa, the sky is falling. And uh, we can't wait to get back to Shock Mate and boat life. But again, Michael's doing her thing right now with the farm. And we all 
respect and love you, Michael. And we thank you for working so hard. And I'm sure your family thanks you for being there with them. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. These are the tales of Boab. Oh,